if all of a sudden you see the camera go like this, well, you know what happened. Hello, welcome back. This is part two of our week-long shakedown cruise as we wait out hurricane season before heading out on our adventure. In this episode, you're going to see us continue to hone our sailing skills and we visit Captiva where we take a bike ride around the island to explore. We have lunch at that wacky bubble room, we have an encounter with a manatee, and we sail back home to sunny St. Petersburg. Well, we arrived in Captiva with plenty of time to do a little exploration on the dinghy. Captiva is located south of Sarasota. It's a quiet vacation community, and it's probably most famous for its beaches and the abundance of shells that those beaches carry. One of the things that's fun to do is walk the water line at low tide, and you can find lots of shark's teeth right there on the beach. And after a little bit of exploring, we headed back to the boat to get a good night's sleep so that we could get up bright and early and explore the island the next day. So the Sunshine Daydream crew does not limit their transportation just to sailboats. Sometimes they use the beach cruiser. All right, so I'm here on the beach cruiser. I'm going to try to take some video while we're biking. If all of a sudden you see the camera go like this, Well, you know what happened. So the Sunshine Daydream crew travels to all sorts of exotic locations and exotic places. Today is no different. about traveling with FMTV, that's First Mate Tracy Burke, is we jam a lot of physical activity into our trips. We came on the island today, I said we were gonna rent a golf cart, of course when we got there we ended up renting bicycles. So you think with all this physical activity I'd lose some weight, but no, because the other part about traveling with First Mate Tracy Burke is she makes sure we eat really, really well, so the two kind of counteract each other. Well, we came about, uh, five or six miles down this island. We're gonna turn around and head back because it's uh, getting a little bit hot and uh, we're ready for some lunch. Well, any trip to Captiva is not complete without a meal at the Bubble Room. This restaurant is an island institution featuring Christmas decorations all year round and other crazy kitschy decor. This restaurant has fascinated island vacationers since 1979. I went ahead and ordered the Louis Armstrong sandwich and I figured that was appropriate since we sat in a New Orleans jazz themed room. So we got our groceries after parking the dinghy here at Jensen's. We're heading back to the boat. So we're back here at the boat, kind of getting settled in for the evening. It is a flat, calm, peaceful night here in the anchorage behind Captiva. 
Now we had a fun day of exploring on the bikes, going to lunch at the, the bubble room, did a little grocery shopping and a little dinghy ride. So uh, now it's time for a nice dinner. So what's on the menu for tonight? Well, we have grilled chicken. Yeah, coming along pretty good and Tracy's inside cooking black beans and rice and uh, a salad and some sort of vegetables. All right, let's see how dinner's coming. Looking good. We had a great dinner that night to finish out our stay at beautiful Captiva Island, and we started preparing for our sail home the next day. Um, we're passing, I think it's called Captiva Pass. We can't go out to the Gulf of Mexico there. It's a really shallow pass, and we really have to have some local knowledge to get out there. The uh, sand shift quite a bit with the weather. So we're gonna go a little bit further north. We originally thought we might just stop at Kaya Costa again, which is right by Boca Grand Pass. But we're supposed to have some really um, good weather today as far as the storms go. And we've been battling storms all week. So we're supposed to have not a lot of thunderstorms today. We'll see. So we've decided to head up a little bit further. Unfortunately, uh, the wind is also non-existent today, so we're going to be motoring, but we're going to head up to Venice. So uh, we had about a 10-mile motor up the intercoastal this morning to Boca Grande. We're going to go out Boca Grande Pass to the Gulf, head north to Venice, and Boca Grande to Venice is about uh, 27 nautical miles, and we have a good anchorage in Venice. We're going to stay there overnight, probably get up real early tomorrow, and then head to St. Pete try to get into St. Pete at a decent hour before the storms kick up again. So that boat that just passed us without a whole lot of warning, without any warning actually, but we were fine, is called the Lady Chadwick, based out of Captiva. And he's heading up to Cabbage Key. That's a uh, boat that takes uh, tourists up to Cabbage Key for the afternoon and for lunch. And that's where he's heading. And um, we're gonna follow him that way, but we're gonna pass Cabbage Key and keep going. With no breeze and a clear sky, it was a hot ride towards home. So we went ahead and stopped the boat and jumped in to cool off. Is the last day of our trip. We actually left Venice at four o'clock this morning. We want to try to get back to St. Pete before the uh, afternoon storms. And the sun's come up. It's about 7 a.m. now. And uh, we're getting ready to put the sails out because we have a little bit of wind. And you can see again the sailor is up on the by the mast getting the sail ready to go. Just like that, the week-long sunshine daydream shakedown cruise comes to a close as we pull back into our home port of St. Petersburg, Florida. We had a good time, learned some things along the way, and uh, we think that uh, with a few tweaks, we're ready to head off on a much longer adventure. Well, there you have it. Our shakedown cruise comes to an end. It was a total of seven days, four different anchorages, 205 miles of travel with a lot of learning along the way. Thanks for joining us, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel and hit that like button. We'd also love to hear from you, so please leave a message in the comments below. See you soon.